Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Yes, it is morning. <laughs> I'm up bright and early today on this beautiful Saturday here in Michigan. Got my Michigan shirt on. Best in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about faking orgasms today. Yeah, we are. It's been a long time coming. And uh, this was sparked by conversations that I have both in my personal life with friends and colleagues and neighbors and just, you know, people in my network and also clients, of course, because we talk all things sex. And one of the things that I do with clients is take them through things that have bringing them shame and guilt and judgment throughout their life when it comes to sex, relationships, intimacy, eroticism, kinks, whatever you want to call it. And faking orgasms is something that comes up. And so in this episode, I want to go over a couple reasons with you. Why? Why do people decide to fake orgasms? And I'm going to go over some benefits as to why maybe considering stopping to fake orgasms. And then lastly, I'll go over how to stop faking the orgasms. All right. Before we jump into this, I have to, have to, have to talk about this episode sponsor. Once again, if you've been listening to the podcast, you've been hearing about it, but Shagrag has become my go-to waterproof blanket. You guys, I literally have it right here. So if you're watching on YouTube, this is the pattern that I chose. It is the one with the peaches and it says, eat me, bite me. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's a nice, soft texture. And it has literally, it has just been a really, really nice addition into our uh, sex room, if you will. And because it's when we are getting done with sex and, you know, just sex brings up liquids and juices and bodily fluids that sometimes you don't want to get on your sheets. And for us, for instance, we have um, silk sheets in our, in our sex room in that bed. And so those, especially, I don't want to be washing them all of the time. And so having this waterproof sex blanket has been such a game changer for us. So, um, let me give you my formal introduction of shag rag. So this is a moisture proof sex blanket specifically designed to protect your sheets and beddings from any wetness that might happen during sex. The shag rag is the perfect accessory to keep things clean when you're getting down and dirty and keeps you from having to wash the sheets after every time you have sex. With the shag rag, you can feel free to use whichever lube you want. Definitely a bonus for us. And the shag rag is triple layered and made from a soft fleece with a moisture proof layer inside. The best part is that there are a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of super cute prints to choose from and very unique prints. I want to add to that. Um, so not only does this protect your sheets from the wet spot that ladies, we know generally happens on our side of the bed when we have sex, but if you are a squirter, you can rest assured that shag rag works for very, very well for average to moderate sessions um, as well. And I have seen people literally dump water on these. We have used them for photo shoots and stuff where water has got on them. And I promise you, it has kept everything underneath nice and dry. And the size of the shag rag makes it easy to pack for traveling. And literally, it's a, it's a necessity if you're a swinger listening to this. And if you got that swingers to go bag, definitely, definitely pack this bag boy in there as well. So again, this has been, we love, love, love to use ours. It just stays in our sex room. It is great. Um, and again, just takes that worry out of having to change the sheets all the time. If we're using lubes or oils or anything like that, I know it's not going to stain my sheets. I know it's not going to get the sheets wet and it's very easy to clean. Um, I just wash it with my regular towels <laughs> and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, we're done. So you can check out the link in the bio and visit Shagrag. You can use code wellness10 and it's going to take 10% off of your uh, order of your purchase. So, and if you get one, let me know. I know a few of you have already purchased these and you've sent me a DM and you are loving it as well. Especially again, my girls out there that are squirters. Yes, yes, yes. I know you girls are loving the Shagrag so far that have got this. All right. So back to faking the orgasms. Ah, oh, I know. We need we we got to talk about this though. So let's start with the reasons why. Why why do women fake orgasms and why do men fake orgasms? Because yes, men and women both um 
both can fake orgasms, right? It's not just something that the females, you know, is only for females. There are definitely men out there, a lower percentage than men, but or a lower percentage than women rather. But there are also men out there too that that have fake orgasms in the past. So here are some reasons why somebody might fake an orgasm. And I'll start with the most common one. The most common one I've seen is that it starts in the beginning of the relationship. So when you are in that very first phase of hooking up with somebody, you may fake that orgasm and then you end up getting in a relationship with them. And you're like, well, shit, you know, I, I orgasmed the first, you know, few times during sex, quote unquote orgasms. I'm going to use that in air quotes because if you're faking it, you know, wasn't actually an orgasm, but your partner thinks that you were orgasming in the beginning of the relationship. And so you continue this on throughout the rest of the relationship. And now you're dating someone. Now it's here. It is 10 years later and you've been faking orgasms for this entire time. So that is the most common thing that I see is that you, we fake them in the beginning because we don't think it's going to be something that's going to last. And then it does. And generally when I'm working with clients and stuff, I'm generally working with people that are in relationships and have been in a long-term relationships typically two plus years or more. And they're, they're still continuing to fake the orgasms because you kind of back yourself in that corner. And you're like, well, what, what do I do? How do I get out of this? So keep listening. We'll get, we'll get to that part. I promise. Another reason why somebody might fake an orgasm, specifically a woman is because maybe she's never had an orgasm before. She doesn't know what it experience the experience of having an orgasm is like and so because she's never had one she feels that shame and she knows how society sets us up that women should be having orgasms during sex right so if she's never had one before she might fake an orgasm to sort of fit in with the norm and and to do what is supposed to be done and supposed to be had during sex so a lot of shame with this one again if, if she's never had an orgasm before Another reason why is that your partner might be insistent. You know, we I've seen in situations where the partner is like, no, you have to orgasm. If if you don't orgasm, I'm not having a good time. You know, there's like, like this sense of pressure behind having the orgasm. And so if a woman is in a position like that and she's one, feeling that pressure, that's already making it harder for her to have the orgasm, by the way. Um, But if she's feeling that pressure, she might then fake the orgasm to sort of appease her partner in that in that situation or um, speed up the situation, even if you will. So partners can be definitely insistent when it comes to having an orgasm. Um, next it could be faking the orgasms, make sex seem hotter, right? So if you're incorporating the moanings and the screamings and the eye rolling and the scratching the back and all of that, when you're in this, uh, situation of faking an orgasm, that could be a turn on for your partner. Um, and I want to normalize, you know, seeing your partner have an orgasm is a turn on for so, so, so many people. So if you know that to be true for your partner, this could be another reason why you are insistent on faking orgasms to make your sex seem hotter or to turn on your partner even more. I also touched on this one a little bit, but again, going back to that fear of taking too long, this is something that I hear from many, many women, um, but we, we instill this thought in our head that sex should be a certain amount of time and that I should reach orgasm by a certain amount of time when it comes to intimacy. And so if you have that fear that you're taking too long or that sex in general, maybe you're just wanting to speed it up, right? You're, you're kind of wanting sex to be over. You're kind of checked out at that point. That could be another reason why, um, you fake the orgasm to speed it up, end it and so on. Uh, and then the last one and the flip side, well, two more. So the kind of the flip side of this one is if you have that, um, partner that, doesn't really care about your pleasure. If you have a partner that doesn't prioritize your pleasure, they aren't really checking in with you and you're just like, nah, you're not really feeling present or connected in sex. You're like, well, why not? Right? Like, why not just fake the orgasm, get this over with, get out of the situation, get back to my to-do list or whatever it was that you were doing. So if your partner is not really caring about your pleasure or prioritizing your pleasure, this could be another reason why somebody might fake an orgasm. And then the last one is the people pleasing. <laughs> and this one is especially for the women that are listening. I find that this one is, is pretty common. 
women are wanting to please their partners in the bedroom. They're wanting to do whatever, whatever it is that they need to do to make sure that their partner is satisfied. And again, this is something that stems from society, how we were taught about sex, how sex is seen in porn, um, where the male is this, you know, the male is really sort of put on this pedestal where he gets what he wants. He takes what he wants. He, you know, his pleasure is the priority, all, all of that. So in that people pleasing mentality, you're, trying to be the good girl, right? You're trying to be, you're trying to do it right. You're trying to please him. You're trying to make him happy. So you might fake an orgasm to make him happier, to appease to him, to make him feel better about himself, to stroke his ego a little bit more. So those are some reasons why women or men might fake orgasms. And again, I primarily see this with women that are faking orgasms, but again, there have been men that have faked an orgasm. And I see this specifically with men that are experiencing, um, ED or, um, delayed ejaculation even. So where it's taking them a really, really, really long time to have, um, ejaculation and have orgasm men in that situation might then be faking an orgasm because side note, men can have orgasms without ejaculation as well. And, uh, so I wanted to, so that people pleasing mentality comes into play here, that fear of taking too long, that partner insistent, you know, and the partner insistent too, from this perspective is again, when, if your partner is insisting that you're having an orgasm, there's that ego attached to that as well. You know, when, when we see our partner's orgasm, that is like a little, that is like a little ego boost for us because we take, we take ownership of that. We think, oh yeah, I, I did that to her. or I did that to him. And yes, I think there's two sides of that, that coin, because you hear me talk often about making sure that we are taking ownership of our pleasure and that we are responsible for our own pleasure and our own orgasms and all that. But of course there's things that our partners are doing that are helping attribute to the process, right? And you are, and you being open and receptive to those things um, and dropping into that erotic space and that erotic mindset that is helping your case as well. So again, those are some reasons why, uh, why you might have been faking an orgasm for some time. And now I want to go over the reasons why I think that you should consider not faking, faking orgasms. So I got five reasons for you on this. The first one is the honesty and authenticity, right? Like faking these orgasms can really create a false sense of sense of satisfaction for yourself. And you're lacking that connection in a sexual relationship because orgasm, orgasm is said to be one of the highest vibrations that a person can experience your highest connection to source, to God, universe, spirit, divine, whatever it is that you call that. So being true to yourself and really owning your pleasure is only going to give you more genuine, deep, authentic, connective experiences. So really looking back on that and being honest with yourself and not creating this, this false sense of what pleasure looks like for you. Number two is enhancing your communication. So by faking orgasms, you might unintentionally be sending the message to your partner that what's currently happening happening is pleasurable when it's actually not pleasurable to you. And I can't stress this one so much because if you're faking orgasms in your partner, you're sending your partner that message to their brain that, ooh, okay, she or he likes when I do this. So what are they going to do? They're going to continue doing that thing. So if you're faking the orgasms, you're actually going to be getting experiences more and more and more often down the line that you don't actually enjoy. And then it's like, okay, if they think that I'm orgasming with this special move and then they go to do the move the next time, now, again, that pressure is coming in where, okay, I think now I have to have to have an orgasm and so I need to fake it again to, because I can't kind of go back on my word of what I did in the beginning. So openly communicating your desires and your needs can really lead to better understanding and and improve your sexual experiences. So being truthful, that goes kind of ties in with number one, like being truthful about what is what is good to you. All right. Mutual satisfaction is number three. So faking orgasms, orgasms can really hinder the exploration of new techniques or activities um, that may genuinely bring you pleasure. 
by being honest about what feels good to you and what doesn't feel good to you, both you and your partner have the opportunity to discover and enjoy new ways that are going to bring both of you satisfaction and pleasure in the bedroom. And some of these kind of tie into what to do if you have been faking orgasms and and really how to turn that around for yourself. But mutual satisfaction, of course, we want to have pleasurable experiences where both people are experiencing pleasure and it's not just one-sided. If you can hear Bane barking in the background, that's him giving me an amen. (laughs) All right. Number four is the self-discovery and empowerment piece of this. Again, by expressing your true desires and your needs for sex, for pleasure, for intimacy, you you empower yourself to explore and experience pleasure in a way that is really, really authentic to you. So this can lead to increasing your own self-confidence um, in a stronger sense of your own sexual identity. So really coming into who you are as a person, again, going back to that concept of taking ownership for your pleasure. This is why we have to stop faking the orgasms. We need more women to be stepping into their sexual power. If you listen to that episode that I did a few, maybe two months ago or so, taking ownership of your pleasure, um, owning your orgasm, all of those things, this is prioritizing your pleasure. This all falls into line with that. All right. And then the last one, guys, the health benefits. There are so many health benefits to having an orgasm. Stop, like, stop minimizing that aspect of yourself and stop not letting yourself experience that and have that part of pleasure and and health, really. Orgasms have so many physical and emotional benefits, including stress relief, improving your sleep, boosting your mood. So by faking orgasms, you are missing out on these potential positive benefits that orgasm can happen and have in your life. So again, you again, and I've talked about this so many times. I love how just all these episodes like flow into each other so well. Um, but you you have I want you to have as many orgasms. An orgasm a day keeps the doctor away. I literally have that printed on a shirt in my swag store. And an orgasm a day keeps the doctor away because there are so many benefits to having orgasms for both men and women. All right. The last segment of this podcast is how to stop. So if you have been someone that has been faking orgasms for quite some time, again, whether it's been in hookups or in a relationship, primarily the, I'm thinking if you're wanting to stop, it's you're in a long-term relationship at this point. You're like, well, shit, <laughs> really set myself up poorly here. So a couple options, I have three options for you. And this first option might seem a little scary. You might, again, the people pleaser listener right now might be like, hell to the no, there's no way I am doing this. But this is going to be the best option. It really helps start you off with a clear slate and also helps prioritize your pleasure. So option number one is going to be to come clean to your partner. And I really thought hard on this one. At first in my mind, I was like, no, they don't need to come clean because what good really is that going to do with a person to the other person that's hearing this? However, going back to the honesty and the trust uh, in the relationship, this is this is ultimately important. And you hear me talk about vulnerability. So this is a place in your relationship that you can bring in vulnerability and build deeper connection with your partner. So coming clean with your partner, I don't want you to just go into this and say, oh, by the way, I've been faking orgasms for the last 10 years that we've been together. That's not, that's not helpful, right? You don't want to say this as like a jab. Well, I've been faking orgasms every time with you anyways. You know, that is not what I'm saying here. I'm saying to create a container, create a space where you can have a conversation with your partner and you can say, hey. I need, I need to share something with you. I want to validate that. I know it's not going to be easy for uh, easy, something easy. I can't even say speak right now. I want to validate that. I know this isn't going to be easy for you to hear, but I want to clear the slate. I want to be able to come clean about this and share with you why I, why this has been happening. So if you say I've actually been faking orgasms during our sexual experiences and then list the reasons why because X, Y, Z, because I did it in the beginning when we were dating, when I didn't think things were going to go anywhere. And it kind of backed me into this corner. I really didn't know how to get out. Um, It could be because 
I never really knew how to have an orgasm in, in relationships. I never really did ever during sex with anybody. Um, but now I'm wanting to experience that. I want us to be more of a team and I'm wanting to experience that with you. Um, it could be that, uh, I, I had the fear that I was taking too long. And so I was having the orgasm because I knew that it helped you feel better and made you feel good. And then we weren't having sex for five hours at a time, which sounds terrible to some people and other people listening. You're probably like, I would love to have sex for five hours at a time. So, you know, just really coming clean and again, validating their feelings because the other, the person that might be hearing this is is likely going to be hurt. They might become angry. They might become frustrated, um, sad even. And so just validating the experience that they have, letting them feel their emotions. Um, and again, stressing so much that you're sharing this because you want to come clean with them and you're really wanting to be on the same team. Um, and then so again, that might, <laughs> that might sound scary. I understand. So if you're listening to that when you're like, oh, hell to the no, there's no way I'm telling them or, or, you know, deep down your partner would not be receptive to hearing something like that to where you think it's going to really cause a deeper problem, which uh, I want to say if that, if that's the case, like, please, like, let's, let's do some sex coaching together because again, that's going down to shame and, and beliefs and, and stuff that they have, or you have from childhood and growing up around sex and yeah, all these things. So that is, uh, if, if it's hard for you and your partner to have a conversation like this, this would be a reason to look into relationship coaching or something like that to help you guys get into a space where you can have conversations like this on the regular without them turning into fights or arguments. All right. Number two reason would be to just stop faking. <laughs> if you make that decision right now, while after listening to this podcast, or maybe you've already made that decision and you just stop faking the orgasms, um, a way that you can segue this into your partner is by saying, you know, what I've been noticing with, with our sex and with my pleasure is that what has worked for me in the past, um, really isn't working that much anymore. And I want to try these new things with you. I want to explore this. So if you're someone that is having orgasms during your self pleasure, you know, you know, your body, you know, what it is that's going to turn you on the moves, the toys, the positions, you know, what is going to work for you to achieve that orgasm. And so then bringing those up to your partner and saying, I would really like to try X, Y, and Z with you. And this is just in general, a new way to change up things in the relationship, explore more pleasure in the relationship and ha have more sexual experiences and new sexual experiences with your partner. So this is, again, this is just as good of an option though. I think that number one is still better because you're starting off with that clean slate and you're building that trust with your partner. But um, this one is more of that. This is more of that like gentle lie, um, a lie of omission, if you will. So just stop faking the orgasms and bringing up to your partner what it is that now you're wanting to try that will bring you to orgasm. All right. And number three is kind of a segue in. Uh, yeah, segue into number two or from number two rather, um, but introducing this idea of trying new things. And I want to share with this one, there are so many resources available for you on my website, rachelmain.com. We'll link these in the show notes for you, but I have my five ways to get the foreplay that you crave. The things that are listed in this freebie are great things to help you build intimacy and build connection with your partner to sort of pave the way to try new experiences with each other. I also have uh, the masterclass, the how to flick the bean and the peen. So if you're someone that's wanting to explore new things to try for both uh, females and male genitalia, this is going to be a great resource for you to get. This one is uh, $39, I think, on the website. So $39, and I go over a ton of techniques for female pleasure, and um, my my co-facilitator, Rachel Z, she goes over a ton, a ton of um, penis hand tricks, <laughs> hand tricks for the penis, and I will never forget sitting through this last May. It was, it was mind-blowing to me because uh, pleasure for a penis should be so much more than just this up and down motion, so much more. 
All right. And then my uh, most recent masterclass that is up on the website is the Increasing Intimacy Masterclass. And I believe that one is also listed at $39. So this is a combination of how to sex up your space, which is a freebie that's available under the resources. Um, but also the increase in intimacy helps to talk, helps walk you through how to increase intimacy, how to increase desire, both uh, for yourself and in your relationship. So if you're looking for, if you're wanting to introduce new ideas and try new things for number three option here, and you're not really sure where to start, those would be some great, great, great resources to check out on the website to be able to help guide you into trying these new things and, and really again, where to even start. So that is that on your faking orgasms. <laughs> we talked why people fake orgasms. We talked about why to consider not faking orgasms and then how to stop faking the orgasms if you're in a relationship or a situation where you have been faking the orgasms. And, you know, to close this out, I really just want to validate again, if you're someone that's been faking orgasms, this is to no judgment of you whatsoever. Again, I listed out these reasons. We go back to the things that I talk about often of shame and guilt and judgment um, and just those, those fears and those limiting beliefs that we have. We all have them when it comes to sex and intimacy. So this is just another piece of the puzzle of how you can take more ownership of your pleasure and experience more pleasure in your life and ultimately help your partner experience more pleasure as well. So I hope that this was helpful. Of course, as always, if you listen and you love this episode, please share it on your social media and tag me um, or send me a DM. Let me know what you loved about it. And for sure, check you out a shag rag waterproof blanket that will be in the show notes as well for you. So thank you so, so, so much for listening to this episode today. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will see you on the next episode. Bye.